he looked at his brother and said, who has put this venomous serpent around you? Her chiming smile are her fangs. Her shapely form are her Give up Sita and live. By fighting against Ram, you are putting a noose around your own neck. When he was speaking these words, Indrajit was outraged. You are my you are my young. I am a sh You are You are Have you no I am a hero. You are a coward. I am ashamed of you. Vibhishan chastised Indrajit. You are is your father and he is you are his son you are acting as his greatest enemy Indrajit, you are an ignorant, evil, despised, envious, you deserve to die. You will. When Ravana heard Vibhishan speaking like this to his son, he became furious. He stared into Vibhishan's eyes and said, it is better to live with a venomous snake than someone who is taking shelter of your enemy. Although you are my brother, you are envious of me. This is what happens in this world. Younger brothers see their success and their fear. 
you do not know that Vibishan, everything you have, I have given you. Whatever you are, I aid you. such ignorant words like a man of I reject you I cannot tolerate your envious face you are a traitor you are a friend get out from here Sounds very much like Hiranyakashipu to Prahlad, does it not? There are universal consistent principles that demoniac people live by throughout history. Within every heart, Krishna says in Gita, of a conditioned souls, there is the divine and the demoniac nature. And by the choices we make, and by our own seriousness in our spiritual practice, we are meant to cultivate and give strength to our div divine nature and subdue this demoniac nature that is within us. Let us examine this family. First, there's Suparnika. She wanted to enjoy Ram and kill Sita. Then there is her brother, Ravana, who wanted to enjoy Sita and kill Ram. And then there is Vibhishan, brother of the Sun family, who wanted to return Sita to Ram and offer love and devotion. They're living in the same place. In a similar way, living within our own hearts. We have Suparnika's tendencies, Ravana's tendencies, and deep down within, our eternal natural tendency is that of Vibhishana. We can cleanse the heart of the Anartas of Ravana and Suparnika, trying to enjoy the goddess of fortune without the Lord, by taking shelter of the Lord himself. And in this age of Kali, the Lord is there to annihilate these demons within and empower human, the divinity within us through the chanting of the holy name. being chastised by his brother Ravana in this way, Vibhishan and his four faithful ministers ascended into this, above the ground into the sky. From there Vibhishan looked down and spoke his final words to his brother. With all respect for you as my king and my brother, I have honestly tried to help you with love. But I cannot hear harsh words against me, nor can I tolerate your sinful attachment to Sita. 
on this very day, I am going to leave behind my family, all my wealth, everything I have, and renounce you. Ravana was very happy. Without Vibhishan, there would be no opinion against his own. Vibhishan with his four ministers, they had such powers, these Rakshashas, they sailed across the sea in less than one hour. And Vibhishan, with those four ministers, they were very big in size. They were in the sky. Sugriva and the monkeys saw them coming. They were obviously Rakshashas. They had garlands, jewels, lovely clothes, and formidable weapons in their hands. Sugriva said to the monkeys, they are Rakshasha enemies. Whatever they say they're coming for, they are our enemies. They cannot be trusted. We should kill them immediately. And just as the monkeys were about to attack, Vibhishan said, I am the brother of Ravana. Ravana is the one who abducted in the most heinous. He is the one that killed the great Jata. And now he is emotionally torturing Sita on the island of Sri Lanka. I have tried all of these days to give him good advice. He continuously rejected. I can no longer tolerate his sinfulness or his harsh words. I have renounced him, all my family, to give my heart. Sri Ramchandra, please bring me to Lord Ram. Ram said, I trust all of you. Everyone, please give me your opinions, what you think I should do. Sugriva said, we cannot trust him. Rakshasha by race, he's the brother of Ravana. We know these Rakshashas, their nature, they are deceitful. Maricha took the form of a deer. course of time, he's going to turn against us. He's going to develop spreading horrible propaganda. He is dangerous. We should kill him immediately. That is my opinion. Another monkey came forward and said, I don't mind killing him, but he cannot be trusted. If we want to be lenient, we should test him. We should have spies around him at every moment. Let's give him some missions to perform. And with spies constantly in word and every action, we'll see if he's really real. And after passing all these tests, then we can consider accepting him. Jambavan spoke, who was known for his wisdom. He said, no, I don't believe in all this investigating. We should just not trust this man. We should send him back. He's been faithful. 
faithfully serving all these years, even to the ten months of Sita's abduction. And now that Ravana disagrees with men and him and speaks harshly of him, he rejects. He rejects. He's being harshly spoken of. A man who's so unfaithful, how could we trust him? No, we should reject him. Ram turned to Hanuman. I trust your wisdom and your words. What do you think? Hanuman said, Ram, you are the Supreme Lord. You are all-knowing. Everything is known to you. But it is your nature to ask us our opinion. So I will honest you give me, I will honestly give you my own. I have seen Vibhishan. I examined his face, his subtle expressions, and listened to the tones of his voice. He's an honest man. He has no duplicity. He has come to surrender his life to you. In Sri Lanka, I was told by Sita that Vibhishan was constantly to send her back to you. In that Ashokavan, where Sita is being tormented, it is Sharama, Vibhishan's wife, who is Sita's very best well-wishing friend, who consoles her and helps her in every way to live. We should trust him. We should immediately accept him to be one of our own family as a brother. He wants shelter. Please give him shelter. Ram very much appreciated Hanuman's words. He said, Anyone who comes to me for shelter, I must give them shelter. Whether they have good intentions or bad intentions, I have to give them shelter. It is my nature. When Sugriva heard this, he went wild. He said, good intentions or bad intentions? Whether they make mistakes or not mistakes, how could you speak like this? This man is a demon. This man is a rakshasha. He is wrong. sincere now in the midst of the battle he's going to side with Ravana because the thickness of the blood of family relationships is very very deep he cannot be trusted Ravana then spoke his immortal words quoted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his instructions to Srila Sanatan Goswami, quoted on several occasions in Srila Prabhupada's purports. Ram said, whoever they may be who sincerely take shelter of me, and honestly says, even once, from this day, I am you. Must give that person all shelter and protection forever. Even if himself came to me today, take shelter with a sincere and honest heart him 
and give him all protection and shelter for all of eternity. Now, upon hearing this, Sugriva, Jambavan, and all the monkeys were weeping in ecstasy to see the nature of Ram's mercy to the most fallen. In great joy, they cried out, Who could be more? It is this nature of your mercy for whoever takes shelter of you that is our only qualification. Sugriva realized he made a lot and he made offenses against But despite all of his mistakes, when he took shelter of Ram, he became completely purified as a pure devotee because the Lord accepted him. Sarvadharman Parityasya Maharaja Aham Tvam Sarvapape Bhyo Mokshayi Sachima Sujaha Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita reveals this eternal truth. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to me. For one who surrenders to me, I leave them of all things and give them protection forever. One who, the Srimad Bhagavatam goes beyond that. One who surrenders to Krishna with a sincere and earnest heart, Krishna gives his heart, himself, to that devotee forever. Dina hina yata chilo harinama utharilo. Even people who have committed the most heinous mistakes and sins like Jagai and Madhai. What were the qualities of Jagai and Madhai? What does it really mean to surrender? It's not just words. To take shame, to sincerely repent for one's past misgivings, to and to give one's heart to take shelter of the Lord who has appeared in his holy names. Vibhishan comes and descends from the sky with his four ministers, takes off his crown, offers his full prostrations at Ram's lotus feet, weeping with humility. On his knees, Vibhishan told, I am the brother of Ravana. I've tried in every way I could to speak the truth to my brother, but he has rejected me. I have abandoned my family, my home, the dynasty that I was born and raised into, my Lord. Now I stand before you with absolutely nothing. The only thing is the shelter of your lotus feet. I surrender everything. My body, my heart, 
my words to you. Please accept me. And I vow to assist you in every way to bring Sita back into your embrace. Ramana, Ram told Vibhishan, I accept you. In the days to come, I will conquer Ravana and all those who support him and make you the king of Sri Lanka. Sri Ramchandra advised Lakshman to bring water from the sea. Then Ram took that water to officially consecrate Vibhishan as the unrivaled king of Sri Lanka. Vibhishan, on his knees with folded hands and his head down in humility, accepted whatever Ram wanted him to do to serve. While all the monkey soldiers were dead, Lord's holy name. Vibhishan was asked by Lord Ramchandra, how are we possibly going to cross over the sea? Different monkeys were giving different opinions. One of them said, we should just get millions of boats. Ram trusted Vibhishan. Vibhishan said, Ram, you are setting the example of the perfect human being in this incarnation. Ask Samudra, the god of the sea, how this could be done. Lord Sri Ram asked Lakshman to bring kusha grass. Sitting on the kusha grass facing the east, he lay down, meditating on praying for the Lord of the sea to come before him. Just as he was about to do this, Ravana heard from Sardula about the amazing quantity of soldiers that were fighting for Ram. He told one of the most powerful of the Rakshashas, who was really a mystic and who Ravana really trusted, his name was Shuka. Go in disguise and tell Sugriva that I am personally giving him the message. I have never done anything against you. So what if I abducted Sita? What, does, what do you care for that? I have the most powerful armies we have conquered the gods. Don't fight against me. I will be your friend. 
I will reward you abundantly. Reject and go back to Kishkinda. As soon as he said that, the monkeys leaped up. He was in the form of a gigantic bird, speaking from the sky, giving this message. Shuka came down and gave this message. And the monkeys jumped up in the air and grabbed the bird and threw him on the ground and started kicking him and biting him and scratching him and punk punching him. And he was screaming, Ram, Ram, save me, save me. They were about to poke out his eyes and pull off his beak and tear off his wings. Ram, save me. Ram said, who is calling for me? Bring him to me. And Hiroshuka is trembling in fear, about to lose his life. Ram said, he has taken shelter of me. Release him. So he went up back in the sky as a bird. And then he said to Sugriva, Ram, Ravan is going to kill me if you don't give me some answer. So he, Sugriva said, tell Ravana the sin of stealing Sita from my lord Ravana is so grievous. I hate him. He is my enemy and I will destroy him personally unless he brings Sita back. Shuka went back to tell Ravana. He was trembling. Ravana said, what did you see while you were there? He said, I'll tell you, but you won't like to hear what I say. He said, just tell me. He said, there are so many monkeys. There's unlimited monkeys. They're huge, and they're all roaring with anger toward you. He said, Ravana, please give Sita back. There is no way that we can stand before them without being annihilated. Ravana was so angry at him. How could you say things like this against me? You are an ignorant fool just because you've been beat up. Meanwhile, Ram sat on the kusha grass. For three days, waiting for the ocean to appear to tell how to cross the Indian Ocean. We will continue tomorrow. Thank you very much.